It's Professor Dave. I'm I'm in the second video and showing you how to build a quiz app. And in the first one, I showed how to build like a slideshow app. And, and just to show you how it's working, if I run this, I can next through all the these pictures of, of the women leaders. Okay, but I want to turn this into a quiz app. So I'm going to go into my blocks. Oh, sorry, I got to go back to editing. And in my blocks, I've got this pick list, but I'm going to need a question list and an answer list and even answer choices list because we're going to make it multiple choice. But I'm going to start off with just the question list and I'm going to kind of bring this over, call this question list. And I'm going to need a list of four things. I'm just going to copy paste command C, command B. I don't really want these pictures because I want these questions. And you know, you can put whatever questions you want and make your own quiz. Or if you want, you're welcome to to use the same ones I'm using here. But essentially what I'm gonna do is I've got my questions in the spreadsheet. And later I'll show you how to actually load the stuff from a spreadsheet directly. But right now I'm just gonna manually grab these or I could just type them, right? Um, but I'm gonna grab that question. Whoops, I, I got the wrong thing. So I wanna go make sure, oh. Uh, yeah, I think I pasted instead of copy. So Command C to copy that. And then I want to command B over here. And there's my question. So I'm going to pause for a second and I'm going to basically add all my questions into my list here. Okay, so now I've got this question list, which has, and the dot dot just means there's more stuff there, but all my questions are in this variable, right? And the variables are hidden, right? The user can't see those. So I need to make sure and show each question. So I'm going to go back to my design Right now, I'm just showing a picture, but I need a label. So I'm going to move this next button down and I'm going to add a label. And this is where we're going to um, actually show each question. And it's actually going to be, we're kind of going to use the same code almost how we change these images. But this label, I'm going to take that out. And this is going to be called the question label. I always rename my components. So when I'm in my blocks, I, I know what I'm dealing with. And so when the screen opens, we're showing the first picture already, but what we need to do is show the first uh, question. So I'm gonna set question labels text, and I'm gonna copy this get block, right? The endless get kind of gets one of the items from a list. Make sure you change from pick list to question list. So in question list, get the first thing. And if I run this, you'll notice that it, it, it puts my question in, right? Um, of course, I need to do the same thing in my next button. The index is the same. I got one index, which is walking me through both these lists, right? Because these are kind of in sync, right? Parks goes with this question. Hopper goes with the second question. So my lists are in sync. So I only need one index variable, but I just need to make sure that I reset the label after the next button is hit. And of course, I want the index item, not the first item after they hit next. So if I kind of get that out of the way, there we go. So I think now every time they click next, I modify my index. If it gets too big, wrap it around to one and then show the indexed picture and the indexed question. So now if I run this, uh, I think I can click next and notice how my question changes to get the right question to deal with that, that same picture. Okay, cool. So I'm doing pretty good. I've got a quiz where I'm walking through pictures and questions, and now I got to deal with, with answers and answer choices. We're going to do a multiple choice quiz. Um, it, you know, over here is my data, and let me just kind of hide myself. I've got the answers, and I've also got these answer choices um, that are way over here. Okay, so for each question, I've got some choices. So I'm going to create two more variables and let me just kind of move my code down here and I'm just going to copy the question list and I'm going to call it answer list. Okay. And then in my answer list, I'm going to grab each answer and uh, Montgomery, Alabama, for instance, is the answer to the first question. And I'm just going to stick that in there. And then I'm going to do the same for all these other answers. And I'll just pause and, and go ahead and do that. 
Okay, so I put all my answers. So now I have a list for questions, list for answers. Of course, I don't show these answers anywhere, um, but I need one more list. And this is actually gonna be a list of lists. And think about it, for every question, there's actually a list of choices that you're gonna make available that the user can choose. And of course, only one of them's right, okay? So I'm gonna make an extra variable and I'll just copy my answer list. And it's gonna be a list, but it's it's a weird one. It's a, it's a list of lists, okay? So each item in my list is itself a list, okay? So I'm gonna go over and grab this guy and I'm gonna do that for, for every for every choice. So I'm I'm gonna have kind of four sub lists and it's gonna get kind of big. So let me move the codes down. Um, but I've got this list of lists, four items. Now, of course, my answer choices are not one, two, three. I'm gonna put actual text in here for each of my answer choices. So like for the first one, I've got three set up. One of them is Montgomery, Alabama, which is the right answer, but I'm going to grab this text like Knoxville, Tennessee, and I'm going to stick it in as um, the first item of this first sub list. Okay. So that first one is going to be Knoxville, Tennessee. Then we grab Montgomery, Alabama, Houston, Texas. And like I said, you can put whatever choices you want in here and make whatever quiz you want. But um, anyway, I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna fill this list of lists up. Okay, as you can see, I, I put in all, you know, I put in a bunch of choices and I, I need to rename this guy. I don't want him to be named Angelus. This is gonna be my answer choices. Okay, and for each question, there's a sub list of all the answer choices and, and notice, for each of these, the right answer is one of the, um, you know, one of the choices. Okay, and you got to make sure it matches exactly with the answers you have in your your answer list. Okay, so we've got this list of lists, and and we're going to use it to show the right choices for the current question, and and that's going to be that's going to be kind of you know a little bit tricky, but I'll, I'll, I'll help you through it. So right now we're showing each question, but we also need to show a sub list of stuff every time as we walk through the app. So when the screen opens, um, you know, we're showing the first question, but we also need to show the first list, sub list of answer choices. Okay. Um, and so, you know, first thing I need to do is in my designer, I need to actually show the, the choices. So I'm gonna move my next button down and I need a list viewer, okay? And the list viewer is gonna show all the stuff. So a list viewer just can show any list. And in this case, we're gonna show one of those sub lists, right? So here's my list viewer. And then in my blocks, you know, I want to, when the screen opens, I wanna show the first sub list and the way you know, with list viewers, what you do is you set the text items property. Okay, so the list viewer shows any list and what you do is stick some list in here. Okay, like for instance, if I threw in question list, it would literally list all the questions, which I don't wanna do that. What I wanna do is grab the first item of answer choices, which is itself a list, which is kind of the tricky part. So anyway, I'm gonna grab this get, and I don't wanna grab it from question list. I wanna grab it from answer choices, and I wanna get the first one. So what I'm saying is in my list viewer, go grab this first sub list, and that's the list I'm gonna show in that list viewer, and that, that'll give the user a chance to, to, to answer. So I'm gonna run this, and as you'll notice, it does show that first sub list. And I got to make this a little bigger so we can get rid of the, the slider. But anyway, we're, we're doing that for the, for the first one. But I just need to do the same thing for the next button. Almost the same code, but I'll just copy this and drag it down. And of course, I don't want to show the first sub list. I want to show the indexed sub list. So just like I do with the pictures and the questions, I'll stick that in, 
Okay, so now if I run this, I think when I hit next, it's gonna show the, the right sublist for the right question. Okay, and let's just go back to editing and, um, sorry, let's go to the designer and just, let's just give a little more room for the, this list because I don't think it's quite big enough. So now if I run it, I think it, it's gonna show up better. Okay, good. Okay, so right now we're, we're, we're pretty, pretty darn close. I'm showing my picture each time, I'm showing my question each time, and I'm showing my sub list. And now I just need to check my answer, which is actually one of the easiest, easiest parts. So I'm gonna go back to editing. And in my blocks, um, I actually wanna do something when the list viewer is, you know, when the user actually guesses, right? And, you know, what I wanna do is just report right or wrong. And I could use a sound component or, or use a sound block to say something or use text-to-speech, but I'm just gonna put a label in for now. And you can add bells and whistles later, but I'm gonna move this next button down and let's just have a label, which is basically, it's just gonna say correct or incorrect. And I'll call this my status label. Okay, and so I've got a label and I don't want any text in there to start. And essentially when I, when I answer, so when the user answers, yeah, I just wanna check the item so the index says which number they chose, but I'm just gonna grab the item, which is the actual text of what they chose. And I'm gonna compare it with our answer list. Okay, remember I set up not only the choices list, but the correct answer list. Um, and so I'm gonna compare what the user chose, this block with the index. You know, so we're always gonna be on, on one of the questions, the index question, and I'm gonna choose the index answer and compare it with whatever the user chose. Um, so my if statement is gonna be, you know, if the item they chose, okay, then that's text. That's one of the things they chose. Is that equal to, and let's go get from the, and not the answer choices, but from the answer list. Remember, this is the correct answers. Let's grab the current one. Let's grab the current correct answer for whichever question we're on. And let's see if the one they chose is exactly that same answer. Okay, so now if I go to, what I wanna do if that's true is I wanna set my status label and I'm gonna set its text to like correct or something. Okay, and then I want to add an else and say incorrect if they're wrong. Okay, let's test this. And you know, if I run my app, first question, if I say Montgomery, that's indeed correct. If I say Knoxville, incorrect, cool. And then I'm gonna hit next. I, I wanna test it for the second one, but notice this stays up, which it should go away when I hit next and get to the next question that should blank out. Um, the answer for Grace Hopper is COBOL. Okay, correct. So I think this is working for all the different questions. Uh, but I do wanna clean up the one thing and, and basically I just wanna set the status label to when they hit the next button, just kind of blank out the, the status label. Okay, and I think that'll do it. So now if I run it um, and I guess Montgomery, click next and notice the status label blanked out, which is good. Okay, so I kind of, you know, I think I've pretty much got a, a quiz and, and, and I think we're doing pretty good. I do wanna clean up one thing, which is in the next button, this four is fine. You know, it works because I've indeed got exactly four questions, four answers and four, um, list for sub list for the answer choices, but I don't really want to say four here. I'd rather say length of list. And that way, if these lists change size, so I lowered them from a spreadsheet or I just decided to edit the quiz, my code will still work. Right now, if I added a new question, this four is too, it's too fixed, right? So what I'm going to do is come over to lists and I'm going to grab length of, and what I want is not you know, I know the length of my question list is, is four. Um, 
but if it changed size, then I would want my code to still work. And so, I'll, yeah, length of question list is four for this instance, but if it did change, then my code would still work. Sorry, just a little cleanup of, of that. And, you know, I think my app should still work. I can ask the question, I can click next. And Dorothy, I think the answer is uh, NASA and there it is correct. Okay, so anyway, there's a quiz app. And like I said, use this for any quiz you wanna build. And really all you have to do is come in here and edit the questions, the answers, and of course the answer choices.